Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope you had a great Thursday afternoon. We're having a great Thursday afternoon right here on the Blitz on 94.1 San Antonio Sports Star. I'm Joe Reinagel. Jason Minix on vacation and uh, James Pledger doing his thing in there. And we've got a guest on our Buyer's Barricade guest line that uh, well, was long overdue. It's our good friend Antonio Daniels, former Spur NBA champion and uh, all around just good guy. Antonio, how are you, my friend? I am truly blessed, Joe. How you doing, brother? Thanks Man, for having me. It's been a long time, my friend. I'm so happy that you agreed to come on with us because uh, you're the perfect guy to have on at this point in time uh, in the NBA calendar, I should say, since the season is over. First thing I've got, to, I just want to get your thoughts on, on the NBA Finals. And there's been a lot of discussion about the Boston Celtics and uh, you know, are they a great team? Are they not a great team? Obviously, now they're NBA championships. What uh, uh, what were your thoughts just on the finals in general? Well, I, I picked the Boston Celtics in six. I, I think what people lost sight of, um, because we live in a prisoner of the moment culture as far as sports is concerned, I think what people lost sight of is how dominant Boston was all year long. Like you think about it, they won 64 games in the regular season. They were 64 and 18 in the regular season. That's not by accident. But what people focused on is, all right, in the first round, they played Miami. You know what? Miami didn't have Jimmy Butler. Miami didn't have Terry Rozier. Then they played the Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland Cavaliers didn't have Jared Allen. And Donovan Mitchell got hurt. You know, and then in the Eastern Conference Finals, they played the Indiana Pacers, and Therese Halliburton get hurt. But – the Pacers should have won game one, and the Pacers should have won game three. So everybody kept poking holes in what the Boston Celtics were doing as opposed to focusing on what they were doing. At this particular time, Joe, before the NBA Finals started, they were 12-2. and two. They lost one game to the Miami Heat. They lost one game to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They were 12-2, and two, but people were so enamored by Kyrie Irving and Luka and the path that they took and who they had to be that people completely forgot about who the Boston Celtics were and how good they were defensively, their defensive versatility, all these other things that came along with the Boston Celtics. So um, I, I, I expected a little bit of a better NBA Finals, but the NBA Finals did not surprise me one bit because we all know this. It's about matchups, plain and simple. Nothing more than matchups, and the Boston Celtics were probably the worst opponent that the Dallas Mavericks could have faced in the NBA Finals. You know, it makes a lot of sense, Antonio. And and do, do you buy in talking about Luka and, and the length of the season when you go from start all the way to finish and, and naturally to finish the NBA Finals that maybe he was just wore out a little bit or was it yes. just the Celtics doing yes. their thing? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. I don't think it's wrong to say that, you know, when you go back and look at some of the greats and you can throw Luka in there with the greats, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, when he was trying to get past the Detroit Pistons, they said he needed to get stronger. You remember when LeBron James played the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA Finals and they just completely backed off of him? Mm -hmm. Now he had to add a mid-range to his jump shot, right? Giannis Antetokounmpo. There's something – there are always – when you're trying to get over that hump, there are things that you need to add. And I think the biggest thing that Luka needs to learn from this finals run is he has to get in better shape he has to get in better condition because now what happens is we, we get your offensive responsibility this is why you respect so much what tim duncan did why you respect so much what kobe bryant did and michael jordan did and all those guys did because to be able to do it on both sides of the basketball you have the offensive responsibility but also the defensive matchup like take that matchup you have to be in an incredible condition to be able to do this but it's something that you have to learn and that it's not something that you know your first time out there so hopefully with this finals run this is something that Luca could take from this maybe the conditioning that I was coming in with was good enough to get to the first round or good enough to get to the second round but it's not good enough to get that Dallas Mavericks team over the hump we're visiting with Antonio Daniels who now is uh well, he's doing. He's on this side of the microphone, doing uh, broadcasting for Fox Sports New Orleans, covering the uh, Pelicans alongside our good friend Joel Myers. Love that guy. We'll talk about him in just a minute. But AD, you know, we got to talk a little San Antonio Spurs because, well, we've got a prospect that that folks say is a generational yeah. prospect, 
And the debate here in San Antonio, my friend, is how do you build around him and how fast do you go? What do you think? Well, I, I, I tell you what he's done. He's expedited the process. Because when he first came in, the thought was, okay, you know, the Spurs can afford to take it slow. They can afford to take it slow and year by year. Now you can't. I, I, you know, th- there are two things I'll say about Victor Wembanyama. One of them, I think a year from now, he'll be the best player in the world. And my co-host told me this the other day, and, and I love the way he put it. If you could, if you could press start, scroll down to um, settings, and then take injuries off, he realistically has an opportunity to be the best player that's ever played this game. Wow. And that's real. That is like to, to watch Victor Wimanyama up close and personal. To watch, like, you know, you can hear the hype and, ah, uh, he's going to be this and going to be that. But when you see it, and he has an edge to him. So I don't have a problem. You know, I'm not big on hyperbole. You know, watching a lot of the, the sports shows where they hot takes and they're all over the place. I have a problem. I have no problem whatsoever saying a year from now, San Antonio Spurs could easily have the best player in the world. In 10 to 15 years from now, San Antonio could have the best player that ever touched the basketball. I don't have a, a issue or problem saying that one bit. Wow, that's that's high praise, Antonio. There's no question about it. So it begs the question now because – Look, nobody expected the Spurs to only win 22 games. Nobody expected playoffs, but we certainly thought they would be a better team win-loss-wise. What do you do with this guy? Do you just go with the draft and build slowly, or do you try to bring some veterans around him? You know, the thing about the San Antonio Spurs, they've never been the type of organization to go big game hunting. That's never been their style. Like, if if you go back and you look through their 20 years of sustained success, the best free agents that they brought in here was, I'm talking about via free agency, was Richard Jefferson and LaMarcus Aldridge. Those are the best two that I can think of right offhand, via free agency. Everybody else, they, they may have traded for, but here's the difference, though. San Antonio has never been a free agent hotbed, but when you have a star like Victor Wembanyama. What will happen in, in today's NBA, when you have young talent, people will line up to play with young talent. He is going to draw people to San Antonio. It's a given, even though it hasn't happened in the past. Because so, when you have Tim Duncan here and David Robinson here and you draft Monte Ginobili and you draft Tony Parker, in years past, they've done it organically. And it's worked for them. It's been fantastic. But now, the fact that you have this alien on your hand, you can do things differently. Because here's the thing. Popovich has coached some great talent. You know, he's coached Tim Duncan, and he's coached David Robinson, and we talked about Monty Ginobili and Tony Parker and all those guys. You know what? He's never coached someone with the skill set of Victor Wembanyama, though. So it's unfair for people to think just because Pop coached Tim and just because Pop coached David that he should have it all figured out, figured out with Victor Wembanyama because this guy is something different than we've ever seen in this league before. So Pop is learning on the fly just like everybody else is. You know, Antonio, it's funny that you say that. Now you're busy during the NBA season. I'm not sure how much you were able to follow Wimby. But looking from this vantage point, it it looked like he was lost at times in November and December. But when the calendar turned, it's almost like he had the mindset of, you know what, I I actually belong here. I can play with these guys. You, You know, for me, you know, I don't think it's when the calendar turned. I think it's when Pop said, you know what, we're going to play you at the center position. Because then he felt more comfortable. When he was at the center position, that's when everything changed. So now he's not out in the perimeter roaming all over. Like it was, I don't know what it was about removing Zach Collins from the starting lineup and putting a Victor Wimanyama in the starting lineup. But this league is about confidence and it's about road definition. When Pop said, look, this is what we're going to do with you. We're going to put you at the five and we're going to rock with you at the five. Everything changed for him once that happened. Well, I tell you what, you, yeah, it makes you make a good point, and, and not only that, I think when uh, when Trey Jones was inserted in as a, at the point guard position, I yeah, think it made a big that difference makes a too. Difference. Yeah, th- it, it does because for me, like, I, and, and no disrespect to Jeremy Sohan, but and I understand the thought process that Pop had at that time, but the point guard position is not a skill set; it's a mindset. So when you have a guy who thinks like a point guard. Right. I remember watching the San Antonio Spurs on nights where the New Orleans Pelicans weren't playing. And there were so many times that Wimby was open. 
but guys didn't know how to get him the ball because it's something that you have to learn. But when you have a guy like, like Trey Jones, who thinks the position, right? Again, it's not a skill set, it's a mindset. So there are certain things that you think. And now you're putting Wimby in positions of success on one hand, but then you also have somebody on the other hand that knows how to get him that basketball as well. That's not what Jeremy Sohan did. That's not who he was. Like you think about the course of his career, going back to Baylor, like he wasn't a, a point guard guy, you know? But when you insert a point guard guy, now Wimby's running and he's rim running and his lobs are open, and now he's getting a lot more easy opportunity, I think that's when things started to change for the San Antonio Spurs. Well, if anybody would know the point guard position, it's you, Antonio. We're visiting with Antonio Daniels. Won a championship here in San Antonio in 1999. And, you know, Antonio, I think not only just the point guard position and, and, and Jeremy Sohan, I think it was everybody on this team. And and I think we, the point you made earlier about po- coaches, uh, Pop has never coached a guy like this. Well, these players have never played with a guy like this. That's and right. I think it took them That's a right. while to get used to him. It, it did. You know, it, the thing is, if you go in that locker room and ask anybody in that locker room, how many of you guys have ever played with a seven foot four guy that can step out and shoot threes, that can put the ball on the floor, that can run, that probably should have won defensive player of the year. How many of you guys have played with someone like that? You know how many guys will raise their hand? None of them. (laughs) None of them. Because he's different. And when you have something different, when you have something special, there's a process of growth for all that are involved. There's a process of growth that's involved from the coaching side. There's a process of growth that's involved from the player side. I remember people used to always say, man, they don't know how to get uh, uh, Victor Wembanyama the ball. Yes, I had to learn it. I had to learn where Tim Duncan wanted the ball, how he liked the ball. I had to learn where David Robertson wanted the ball. Like, that, again, that's a point guard stop process. But you know the way to learn it is with reps. That's how you learn it. You don't just learn it because someone tells you it's open. You can't – if you don't see it, it's not there. But when you start to play with guys and you start to watch film and – on these off days and you start to realize and understand what it is you have on your hands, that's when things start to change. San Antonio beat some really, really good teams down the stretch. They came into New Orleans and beat the New Orleans Pelicans. They beat the Denver Nuggets last game of the season in a game that the Denver Nuggets needed. They grew throughout the course of this season. This is why when you start talking about the Western Conference next year and you start talking about, oh, the Denver Nuggets and even the Boston Celtics repeating, there are some teams that are going to be completely different versions of themselves next year because this year of learning and growth and progress will serve them. You know, Antonio, that, that's interesting. And, and, and look, I don't know why it is, and, and there's no disrespect to anybody in the East, but it just seems like the West has been dominant for so long. Uh, why do you think that is? I mean, you, you, your team in New Orleans to Oklahoma City to Minnesota, whoever it happens to be, why do you think that is? I don't, I wouldn't say that the West is more dominant. Honestly, I would say more along the lines of right now, we are in a a different uh, NBA because in the past, the NBA has been about dynasty from the Lakers to the Celtics, to the Spurs, to the Heat, to the Golden State Warriors. But you know what, Joe, we have six different champions in the last six years. So now it's more about parity. It's not about one team just going out and dominating everybody else. There's no real villain team in the NBA. Like, I'm not comfortable now saying that the Boston Celtics will repeat next year. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not comfortable saying now that the Boston Celtics were in the NBA Finals versus the Denver Nuggets that the Boston Celtics would have won. Because, again, it's about matchups. So I don't think it's as much about the East and West as much as it's about parity. I will say this, though. The West is incredibly deep, though. The West is so deep. When you think about all the teams this year, and that's without the San Antonio Spurs, that's without the Houston Rockets, that's without the Portland Trailblazers, that's without the Memphis Grizzlies, who'll get John Morant back, you know, who'll get Desmond Bain back, who'll get all these guys back, and all these guys are competing for eight spots. All these teams are competing for eight spots. So the West is incredibly deep because these teams are young and they're getting better every season. No doubt. We're visiting with Antonio Daniels, who uh, does the broadcast for the New Orleans Pelicans and uh, does a very good job. You know, I got to tell you, Antonio, 
you were always good, man, when I interviewed you back in the day. But boy, you uh, you're you're pretty sharp now. You enjoying what you're doing? I love what I do. Like, I mean, realistically, you know, to be the color analyst for the New Orleans Pelicans and have a serious XM show every day, like to actually get paid to talk about something that I'm passionate about, Joe. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better job. Outside of coaching, outside of coaching in the NBA, I, like I, I literally do love what I'm doing. Like, I'm at every New Orleans Pelicans practice. I'm at every shoot around. You know, um, great relationship with the guys and the coaching staff. And then when I'm not there, I'm talking about NBA basketball, you know, for 15 hours a week on Sirius XM. So I, I have, I am, I'm blessed far more than I deserve. Well, you know, Antonio, uh, James Pledger just reminded me that J.J. Redick was hired with the Lakers today. Does that uh, maybe open the door for an Antonio Daniels? Uh, you know what? I, I, will, I will go where God takes me. Oh. <laughs> I will tell you that. I, I, will, I will go where God places me. He is not. He won't send me somewhere that he hasn't qualified me to excel. Um, good for JJ. I, you know, I, JJ was in New Orleans when um, his first couple years, and it's different. I, you know, for me, the coaching hire is not about JJ Reddick. It's more about the the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't understand hiring someone, a rookie head coach, into a championship or bust situation. I don't, and I know what they're expecting. They're expecting JJ Reddick to be, or wanting JJ Reddick to be their Pat Riley. You know, they bought Pratt Riley from the radio booth way back in the 80s. Jerry Buss calls him, you know, come on down and coach. And then we know the rest of that story. So that's what they're expecting J.J. Reddick to be. But the difference was Pat Riley wasn't coaching in a time of player empowerment. So when you have star players that have so much control, as much control as they do today, I think it's a completely different NBA environment that J.J. Reddick is stepping into. I wish him all the luck in the world, though. I would love to see him succeed. Well, it's going to be fun to watch. That is for sure. And something else that's a lot of fun to watch is your basketball camp. And it's coming up, Antonio, uh, in July. You've been doing this for a long time, man. And you're good at it. I know you're passionate about that. Yeah, 23 years. This will be year 23. Wow. uh, For me. And, you know, me and my wife were just talking about this in the car. Uh, Everything we do now at this stage in our life is some form of ministry. Um, and this is just a different form of ministry. Um, I, this makes my, my summer, um, you know, any, any parent out there that has sent their kid to any basketball camp whatsoever, I would hold my camp up to that one any day of the week. Um, you know, it, just to tell you the specifics of it, it's, it's girls and boys and girls ages six to 17. Um, every kid gets lunch. Every kid gets uh, a camp t-shirt. Um, I, I'm there all day, every day. It's not one of those camps that I put my name on it and I come in and I sign autographs or I roll basketballs out and tell them just to have fun. I, I take this seriously. You know, I really do take this seriously because I truly believe that the words and the uh, morals and values that we instill in those kids while we have them will carry on for once that ball stops bouncing. There are so many parallels, Joe, between life and basketball. And I know that I don't have these kids for an entire school year or for the entire summer, but the time that I have them to just try and instill something in these young men, something in these young women, when they step out of that gym at the end of the week, they are completely different than what they were when they got there. Antonio, tell us uh, when it is and, and how do folks get registered for it? Uh, the dates of the camp are uh, July 22nd through the 24th. Uh, It's at Cornerstone Christian School off of uh, Northwest Military. And the easiest way to to register is at www.danielsfamilyfoundation.com. Again, it's www.danielsfamilyfoundation.com. And if you can't afford to pay the whole thing, we gladly give out scholarships. Because the thing I don't want to do, I don't want to keep a kid out that deserves to be there but can't afford to be there. Dude, you are the so best. offer scholarships as well. Yeah, you're the best, man. Always are. And, folks, I've seen him in action at his camp, and I don't know where he gets the energy from. It is really incredible. Antonio, always a thrill to talk to you, my friend. Joe, I am truly blessed, man. God bless you, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Antonio. We appreciate it. Antonio Daniels, NBA champion with the San Antonio Spurs in 1999. Now, 
Well, he's in the broadcast booth with Joel Myers for the New Orleans Pelicans, and he does a great job. And Antonio Daniels joining us via the Buyer's Barricade guest line. Buyer's Barricades provides traffic control rental and sales for San Antonio and beyond online at buyersbarricades.com. 